Vlog number 20, grand finale of Total Rebuild. I don't even know how should we kind of name it my next one, but anyway, so little kind of summary. Last six weeks have been more of a, what I like to call strength type block. Uh, and I like training like that. I never really felt excruciatingly fatigued and whatnot, but because I was getting way out of hand heavy, which had a negative impact on my sleep, which always has negative impact on my uh, ability to eat food, which has negative impact on my ability to recover and pretty much snowballing down from there. I do believe I probably lost a couple kilos by the end of this. Uh, and that was predominantly, like I said, uh, just getting to the point where I was slightly uncomfortable. Usually I am way more, more, way more uncomfortable at lower body weight, but this block was really heavily based on uh, just getting getting my fitness levels up for my body weight, which definitely worked amazing. Uh, no injuries, feels the best I've ever felt. Uh, all joints are feeling smooth. Every single movement I do is feeling great. Uh, do take a, an account that I started to see chiropractor nearly every week because last five, six weeks, I was using loads nearly to 90% of what I couldn't lift. And uh, so it was taking a toll on my joints because I haven't lifted those weights for a very, very, very long time for uh, nearly five months. Nearly five months, it was working probably at 60, 70%, and then last six weeks, just ramping it up straight away. So it was a bit taxing, carrying my own body weight, and then dealing with those loads. Nevertheless, uh, I kind of gonna pull back now, even though I'm transitioning to hypertrophy block. That's the one that's usually messing my appetite way more than training for fitness or strength because just muscle, dam muscle damage is much higher and at hypertrophy training and uh, yeah your fitness levels suffer because of that because you're like a tin man every every single day so uh, and i'm one of those guys who really need to pull back on everything uh, another thing is i'm coming off like cold turkey on any, any kind of supplement and, and some, someone messaged me and I'm like, oh, so you're going on TRT? I'm like, no, me not taking anything means me not taking anything. Like, keep my multivitamins in, keep my whey protein in, keep my creatine in. That's it. Like, I can't take anything that improves my performance because that means I will be in gym 24-7. So I literally need to take less things that could help me recover so I don't spend so much time in gym <laughs> because if I feel fresh, if I feel energized, I'll be in a gym. So, uh, yes, this is probably going to be five, six weeks, maybe longer. I already stopped everything uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago now, just because like of the half lives and whatnot, I don't really need it anymore. Uh, and I also wanted to, wanted to transition into new training phase, and as I always say, everyone I bloody work with, first couple weeks of any training block, do not train to failure, ever, like ever. It's just defeating the object, especially if that's a new movement. Uh, you genuinely want to do something at such low intensity that you don't even feel sore next day, because you need to go through, uh, what would be the, the right word, uh, uh, a customization kind of process, basically getting your body used to what you've got to do with it. And then week two, week three, you start loading it. You start loading your, your tissues with a bit more weight and whatnot. I would go extremely low on loads, low on intensity, low on everything on first couple of weeks on any training block, no matter how fit you are, just to make sure that you really don't overtrain. On, on first day, especially if you feel great, it's so easy to just cause so much damage that it holds you back for two, three, four, five weeks. I'd rather you feel fresh every single week, walk in and train at higher intensities than you could, and walk out as if you haven't even trained, 
then walk out, crawl out of, outside of the gym, and then spend your time in bed for two, three days just to train again and think you're hardcore as hell. But in reality, you're just a nomad. <laughs> so, and I reflected to myself, I'm I'm that nomad. I have done it so many years, and when people come to me and like, yeah, but I want to do it this way, I'm like, I have done it that way. Don't. It doesn't work. It works to the extent, and it probably mentally is more of a, like rewarding, but in reality, in long term, it is just going to backfire. It's like restricting yourself on everything and then just eating cheesecake like there's no tomorrow. You know, that's, that's how an educated programming looks like. You just go all out and then you just collapse and don't have any social life. It's just not smart way about way how to go about things. So anyway, I'm going to go through some questions uh, to finish the training block. Probably going to mention some numbers. So at the beginning, I couldn't even squat properly. I'd, I need to find some videos. I, I do believe I have a video where I'm struggling to even lower 140 kilo bar on my shoulders. That's how uncomfortable it felt. Uh, there was some nerve impingement in my hip, and that's that was it. So threw in a lot of weird movements that let that hip moving well. Uh, every single training session would start with some calisthenic movements, basically making sure that my joint integrity goes through the roof. And when that was ready, that was first 14 weeks, there were no heavy lifting for like 14 weeks, then I was ready to load it up. Whereas everyone else is usually going all out every single training session and then they are surprised. Why is the shoulder not healing? It won't heal if you don't give it, <laughs> give it a rest, you know? And giving a rest doesn't mean you can't train. You just need to train smart. So yeah, going from there, nutrition is gonna be something that I might even uh, give more of a considerations than I have done so far because I need to mix and match my physical training with my cognitive abilities for next 12 months at least. Uh, because every four to six weeks I will have a really intense seminars where training will but will not be possible because they will be like 12 14 16 hour days four to six days in a row sometimes 10 days uh, so uh, for for me it's easy i have done it before and it doesn't really bother me but like i i know a lot of people can't even go on holiday because they are afraid of they're gonna mo lose muscle and whatnot and yeah you probably will if you don't have that muscle density that comes with maturity with training all the time uh, I, for once, uh, well, I can't say I've ever been like that because uh, I, I could never go on holidays. <laughs> I, couldn't, I never could afford any, any, anything like that. But even when I have gone on holidays, I'm like, there's no chance you're going to get me in the gym. I like, just, just now, now. <laughs> I can get back to that routine when, when I'm back, but I'm all in on whatever the hell I'm doing. Uh, and gym is definitely not that on holidays so let's get through some questions uh how to measure progress uh well the greatest answer ever it depends what what's progress for you uh like somebody asked me the other week dude uh seems like everything is stalled uh what nothing is changing so i had to point him out that yeah there is you're actually much fitter you're doing same exact stuff this week much quicker than you did last week that's progress so you need to have a, a clear uh, like in business like calls them keep kpis key performance indicators so what are you actually measuring against what so you need to define where you are what is your outcome and then measure the difference every single week and definitely do it as often as you can thing is if you're only uh, let's say look on your progress once a year oh, on such and such data why well, wait this and then don't weigh yourself at all and weigh yourself next year and you don't take in consideration anything else it's just pointless metric uh, that's why I always ask everyone to every single week reflect on everything I ask from them as if you have never done it before this is extremely important because even if you write me the same as last week, uh, it doesn't give me anything because I need you to be in a mindset that 
you give me a definite answer, such and such thing happened. And then I look for patterns. I genuinely don't care what happened on that week. I will compare last four, six, eight, ten weeks with every single metric you have put down. And if you are missing one, one week, we miss another second week, and so on and so forth. It's very hard to, to get any, any broader picture to understand what actually works for you, what doesn't work for you. And I'm looking for like uh, physiological things, psychological things, uh, commitment things, and so on and so forth. So for you, you need to define what progress is. Like benching more or, you know, uh, what, what is more? How, how to measure progress is, you need to define what is progress for you. And then, like I said, def define what for you means getting better and adjust it to where you're currently at and then just track it every single week. So it could be body weight, it could be body fat, it could be strength, some kind of parameters, so it could be all sorts. Now, let's be honest, at the moment, I am nowhere near as strong as I was when I was like 18, 19, 20. Uh, just because I believe it was, was it 17 or 18 years old when I was benching 190, 180 at 82 kilos. I'm 120 now. So how I got stronger? Not really, because for the last 10 years, I haven't trained for strengths. Well, let me rephrase it, for the last 12 years now. Uh, I haven't trained for strengths at all. It's just, I like lifting heavy, but it was not specifically designed for me to get stronger. It was, for, uh, programming was more designed for me to make sure I don't get to point where I overtrain and make sure I recover and make sure I have fun with my training sessions. And more often than not, I could not train in an environment what I would deem be efficient for strength training. So I was just lifting weights, pretty much, just for shits and giggles. So that's why I'm not really that bothered, you know, when someone says like, why don't you compete in this and compete in that? Why do you need to compete? You, you, you know, like, give me a solid reason why would you think that whatever you take on, you need to do it at a competitive level. So let's say, for example, if you go out for a drink, do you always need to get drunk? Like, you can't you have just fun with having a glass of wine or cider or whatever and just sit with your friends and have fun with it? That's how I perceive my training. It's just fun. It's enjoyable for me. Uh, and if I decide to compete in something, it's usually a bit of a boredom. Not that, oh, I want to win. I want to prove that I'm this and that. I don't, genuinely don't care. <laughs> so uh, I, I just find it fun. So yeah, for progress, you need to find what progress you're actually measuring and then go for it. Uh, because you, you can't, it's too broad of a thing to ask. So write down, okay, I'm going to measure this. This is where I'm at. This is where I want to be. What do I need to fill in this gap? Boom. Any experience is DHB? What are your thoughts in it as an anabolic? Absolutely no experience whatsoever. Zero. Zilch. I have seen it. Uh, I believe real one probably... Sorry. Once. Uh, no idea how it would work on me personally. Uh, and I'm not really that curious to find out. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, some things that I've only come across only last couple of years, obviously working with Broderick and whatnot, uh, but some people have actually realized that I am not the drugs guy. Like, lower, slower is really the thing, and I am that thing. Like, I, I really don't want to kind of force anything. Uh, that's why I don't reach into the things that seem slightly more advanced that I need. Uh, so let me rephrase that. If I was to take things very seriously in terms of competing, getting as, as muscular as I can and this and that, I would probably explore this. Yeah, but uh, so far I've had no need for it. I already have multiple times kind of said that I feel uncomfortable as it is in my body weight. I don't need to be any bigger just to make me feel even more miserable and just to pretend that I feel great. No, just not for me. Uh, so yeah, sadly, I have no personal experience whatsoever on my own body. But uh, I know a couple guys 
who have taken it and they absolutely love it and they say it's amazing, uh, immediate results and so on and so forth. But uh, I personally can't reflect. And I will probably talk to those guys and see what their blood has been before and after. And, and But yeah, um, uh, how people say old school, very old school. Just use basics and uh, you get the best thing out of them. Thoughts on coaches saying to have testosterone higher than DECA to avoid DECA sides? Uh, I've not heard it personally from anyone I know. Uh, I have seen it. I have, uh, but those were not coaches. Those were just guys in a gym talking absolute shit. Uh, so yeah, it's it's very individual. It's like, I feel, how can I even say? feel sad that you take something that should improve your sex drive and you run into issues like this. If you do, you probably should never come near PEDs. That, that's my personal opinion. That, that's how I look at it. Instead of let's just take more drugs so this drug doesn't cause any side effects, uh, just leave it to guys who don't have any side effects at all. <laughs> no, no, genuinely, I think uh, I, I, I've heard it's real. Uh, but how much of what you should be taking, you, you really can't decide. Uh, but I would, weird mixture to begin with in sense of there is no background of what you're trying to achieve with this. You kind of, oh, how do I combat side effect from these things? Why do you even take them? Like if, if that bothers you, you shouldn't be taking them to begin with. Take something that you know never can cause those kind of issues, you know. Uh, but yeah, my 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 thoughts on coaches saying that is, I don't know a single legit coach that I would trust to give me advice saying that. Uh, but yeah, I have heard that obviously. But how much goddamn thing you need to take to mess up your sex drive must be a lot <laughs> so how often do you see a problem with people on DECA what are often the problems with people on DECA I most genuinely see uh, issues mentally for God knows what reason they just turn into whiny little shits like completely can't control their emotions uh, Go off rails, might even start taking some uh, recreational drugs, different coke and, you know, all those kind of things. Mentally, they just go absolutely haywire. Uh, so, yeah, I never realized it can happen until I actually, like, worked with many people and started to carefully analyze what they have done in the past, how they felt and where did it go. Uh, and more often than not, uh, I had to point out to them that, dude, you mentally can't take this. You, you just psychologically can't hack it. You turn into a little bitch. So, but yeah, definitely not something like Decadic and whatnot. But uh, mentally, I, I see that Deca has caused hell of a lot of problems on a lot of guys I have spoken to. And until I actually sit down and speak to them and ask them how did they feel before, after, this and that, what were the conversations, uh, more often than not, guys who have started taking it, they fall out with their girlfriends, wives, whatever the hell it is, and they never would put that down to that. But that's common de denominator. Everything else they've done was exactly the same, and then they are this thing, and boom, they just go cuckoo. So uh, be mindful of that. If you go for that, I don't even know how you can test that. But it would be good to have an honest friend who just tells you, look, you turn into bitch, stop taking this stuff. It's not for you. So, but yeah, I do find that, and which is which is funny. I, I never realized it could happen. Uh, but only when I moved to UK and started to talk to people, uh, turns out not many can hug mentally. <laughs> Moving on. One ask how you like to program periodize for hypertrophy, but too general and vague. Uh, well, you already asked anyway. <laughs> so how do I like to program periodize for hypertrophy is uh, based on where the hell you're at. Uh, do you need even hypertrophy? You know, if you're a strength athlete, that's a bit slippery slow because true hypertrophy, in my opinion, is training your body to be inefficient. 
If you're a strength athlete, that's counterproductive. So I would rather you do some kind of hybrid style training where you do a little bit of higher rep stuff, uh, but I can't class it as pure hypertrophy. It's more of a like blood flow type training. Uh, but yeah, uh, it, it, it is vague, like, like you said, how do I program a paradise? I, I always have blocks, you know, how a block of getting your body to kind of kind of alarm phase where you get used to what you do, then a little bit of intensity uh, and then kind of peaking phase. Very similar to any other programming, it's just the physical stimulus will be completely different. Uh, and probably there will be not a lot of neurological stuff involved in it. Um, but yeah, and I keep repeating it over and over and over again. Periodization is knowledge, experience, academic studies, and creativity taken right. So if you have all those four, you can periodize the hell out of anything. Uh, but if you haven't got any of them, or if you have just one or two, if you just read a book about periodization, uh, I've got bad news for you, it's not gonna work. Uh, every single periodiz <coughs> periodization book is uh, just someone's creativity, you know? Uh, because it's hard to say this program works and this doesn't, because anything that has some kind of structure is gonna work. It's like saying, no, oh, if you take motorway and get to New York, uh, you will never be able to get there any other way. But there are a lot, a lot of side roads that you can take. Sometimes you can't even take road. If road is broken, you need to take a bloody boat, you know? Uh, so yeah, it, it is vague and it depends on personal preference. It depends on a lot of things. Like when I go through things is, I have a structure, how I want people to kind of approach their trainings. I need to, mentally be ready and physically get ready and get accustomed to several different training styles and then i kind of funnel them down in a one set way that i know works for most people and then figure out if it works for them but they need to get to that point because a lot of point uh, a lot of people have completely different starting point so the starting point needs to be funneled down to where majority sits and then you can kind of generalize some kind of plan together that would probably work for most people, but they need to go through that period at the beginning to even be fit, strong, mentally capable, and disciplined to stick to stuff that is most optimal for the majority of people. <clears throat> Do you use uh, periodized reps and reserve in hypertrophy training? Why, why not? Thoughts on reps and reserve as a tool? Well, it's, it's just a made of term. term. Uh, you know, I, I like music, Mike Israel stuff, but it's... How can I even say? I would never use it. Uh, well, I have used it lately with very experienced guys because I find that if you are not extremely experienced, you have no understanding what truly few reps in reserve means. You are stopping, and then when you train with me, you, you're gonna do 10 extra reps, and like, dude, you never trained, you never understood intensity. So my my thoughts on hypertrophy, it's probably a great tool to understand that using this, you're probably not gonna make, make mistakes that I did, where I was training every single day to failure, two or three times a day, doing running, this and that. I could do that because I had no other life. Like I was little in a little village in the middle of nowhere, absolutely nothing else to do apart from eat, sleep, train, repeat. Well, obviously laboring, working like a horse. But that gave me just endurance to, to be able to train the way I did. But it's current lifestyle, uh, not many people can do it. And if let's be honest, if you will live like that, eat, sleep, train and nothing else, uh, you'll end up broken on the street uh, because now physical kind of uh, attributes are not as important as your mental ability to, to do stuff. So if you want to provide for your family, for your society, for everything else, you need to be mentally kind of slightly advanced and uh, if you just physically wear yourself down all the time that that's not gonna happen but reps and reserve is probably a great tool for someone who understands how to use them most of the time i i think it's pointless for someone like myself but 
if you truly understand that this tool gives you some kind of metric to measure and compare week to week, you're going to progressively overload based on that and you're going to make progress. Probably not the best progress because your perception of two, three reps in reserve is actually 10 reps in reserve. So you could train harder and actually progress quicker. Uh, but nevertheless, you will make progress. As, as long as you have something to stick to and be disciplined enough to stick to it for long enough, you will get results. Are there any foods you crave or enjoy rather than fuel? Absolutely not. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't crave any foods. Like I could literally go days without food. I come from a background where I just didn't have food. Uh, and truth be told, uh, I have negative associations with eating because I need to eat so much. I feel like I waste half of my life just eating. So I don't have like, I really want this. Oh, let's get this takeaway. And you'll never see me excited about food and because of like, I have eaten so much food and I have starved myself for so much as well. Uh, even when I'm dieting, like on severe calorie deficit, I'll not crave anything. I really couldn't care. I'll crave good sleep. <laughs> That's about it. Yeah, you get to you get through stages, but uh, you sometimes get to point where you're like, whatever, it's just food. You know, I don't see food as uh, for a lot of people. It's just something that they, they need. They they kind of enjoy it. Uh, you know, it's de-stressing them because it takes blood away from brain, so you you feel like calmer and whatnot. Uh, I would get anxious if I would have to eat even more. <laughs> so, and that's the thing, you know, people associate things as different, uh, different emotions. And my emotions are completely blank uh, towards food. So I could, I could never tell you I really want this food now. I could tell you what I like. I like steak. I like Italian style food. I like some soups and stuff. But never have I sat there and thought I wish I could have that now it just doesn't happen anymore it probably has in past but I, I just can't recall it and I must be must be very young then. Uh, but yeah hopefully that makes sense I'm gonna wrap this up uh, not gonna prolong it any longer uh, drag it any longer prolong it any longer that's a weird sentence if you got any ideas how I should call next vlog, uh, let me know. Uh, as always, drop some questions underneath. I really appreciate everyone who sent me these. And uh, on that note, I'll see you next week when we are starting hypertrophy phase. I think uh, some people probably bothered, but I definitely don't weigh 120 kilos at the moment. Probably 117 or something like that. 116 even. Uh, but yeah. If you want me to track it, I'll track it. But personally, I don't like that as a metric for performance. As I, as I am performance based in in a core, in my core values towards training. So yeah, that being said, I'll speak to you next week. <laughs>